Water Street is kicking off a partnership with the Heart Research Institute at uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi and the Port of Corpus Christi to do what nature intended. Jenny Pollock did uh, the background research on this. What do you do at the uh, Heart uh, Research Institute? I'm a research scientist and, for the most part, work on oyster ecology in Coastal Bend Bays. Uh, Brad Lomax in the box with uh, Jenny Pollock. Brad, of course, the owner of uh, Water Street Restaurants. You recycle 60 to 70 tons of oyster shells. That's exactly right, Jim. I mean, and this began as a uh, as a cost control problem for me. You know, I'm, I'm I pay weight, you know, by weight Get rid for of the your yeah right for the garbage to go to the landfill. So I, I've got 140 thousand pounds. Of oyster shell, you know, we take we take one ounce of oyster out of the shell and throw the rest away. You said it earlier. You can't you can't talk about this without talking about the contribution the ports made, because the darn thing stink for a while darn, until yeah. and they are providing us with space for nothing so that we can get the shells out, let them you know cure to a point where they right. can be restored to the bay. Because it wouldn't be cost effective to just take them out every day. Uh, I mean, it, right. it would be bad. Right, right, right. So what, we, what we're doing is several times a week we have students come pick up the shells from Water Street. They do the dirty work. They pick up the shells. They transport them up to the Scrapping port property. Scrapping young men. Scrapping yes, young men. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you've hired two extra students. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. 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 So above minimum wage. And yeah. they pick them up. They pick them up. Okay, because this has got to be a uh, challenge for uh, breaking people of old habits at at Water Street. But but go ahead. They pick them up, and they take them to the port and dump them. Right. So uh, on Brad's side of things, he has his servers saving these shells and putting them into special bins. Those bins then get dumped into our larger bins. These students come pick them up with a flatbed trailer, load our large bins on there, take them out to the port, and... Store them out there. Recycling that works. <laughs> that, that, that makes That's sense. That's right. Yes, it does. That's it, right. it makes a lot of sense for us. And and you know the uh, the servers are excited about it. I mean, people are looking for ways that they can yeah, do help. things mm-hmm. and and wrap their arms around trees and oyster shells. So we've had a lot of enthusiasm, um, you know, from within the company. But uh, again, you know, Jenny doesn't talk about it. She went out and got the funding. This is a grant. Funded from the general land office, right? Right, from the general and land so, office. And so, you know, I go to these guys with basically a complaint, and they come back with with not only a solution but a funded solution. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm just stoked about it, Jim. Is this going to increase our oyster production? That's a good question. I mean, if we can uh, find the right places to put the shell in the water so that this is sustaining uh, degraded reefs, then... I can't see that it's going to do anything but help. So how are you going to look for those, uh, the places to put the shells? Well, what we'll do is we'll do some research. Um, Parks and Wildlife, for example, goes out every month, twice a month, and collects oysters. We, as well, go out and collect water quality measurements around the bay. So we'll try to kind of map all those things together and say, these are the places that have the conditions that oysters like the most, that there's the fewest amount of disease that we find in these areas and seems to be the healthiest reefs and we want to put our money in the best places. We also recognize that the Gulf of Mexico is one of the best places on the planet to to ensure sustainability of reefs into the future. Danielle, good morning. Welcome to Lago in the morning. Good morning, Jim, hey. Jenny, and Brad. Morning. I just morning. had a question for I had a question for Jenny. Sure. Um, about how long, what is the life cycle of the oyster, in other words, from the time it's fat until it's a marketable size? Um, how long does that take, and then how long will it take for us to determine whether or not we have reestablished oyster beds? Those are good questions, Danielle. Well, in Texas, we're fortunate because of our warm water and our long growing season that oysters actually can grow to market size in a year or a little over a year, so a year to a year wow. and a half. Yes, where, whereas maybe Delaware, Chesapeake Bay, we're talking more like three years. So we're lucky in that if we have a bad oyster year, something happens out there, a hurricane comes through, we can see recovery fairly quickly if the if the conditions is, um, reestablish themselves to be favorable for, for oysters. Um, the other interesting thing is that oysters, I was talking about those babies swimming through the water, that happens twice a year here in the spring and in the fall. So those little baby oysters that swim around in the spring and land on on oyster shell and start to grow, those are actually going to reproduce themselves in the fall. It's a very quick process. Um, so we could actually see results of, of what y'all are doing cooperatively within three to five years. 
That's what we're hoping. Yep, that's what we should be able to to determine. And what we'll be doing is we'll continue to monitor these reefs that we put out to make sure that we are choosing the right location. It's a great idea. I'm very excited that y'all have done this. And keep up the good work, everybody. Wally. Hey, hey Lago, what's up? Hey, man. Good morning. Hey, I just had a comment about those oyster reefs. You know I fish a lot. Yep. And let me tell you what, those are just like little mini reefs like you have out in the Gulf. Structure attracts fish, and it's not just redfish. You catch a lot of trout, a lot of flounder. They're uh, feeding on the uh, bumpy uh, well, surface no, of the oyster shells? Well, what you get is the oyster shells create protection for little fish and little crustaceans, and that's what brings the game fish in there to feed on. That's a great thing they're doing. It'll make a difference. For more information, visit our website at www.oysterrecycling.org.